Good morning, family. It's good to be here. I love, I love to sit over here by the door and have the sunlight kind of reflect through the windows. Um, spring is here. I can't tell yet, but it's here. The frost on the cars, uh, frost on the on the grass. Um, but you know what it reminds me of when I see frost? It reminds me that like it do in the morning, the grace of God is renewed over us every single day. When I see the frost on the ground, I know that God, rem God remembered us again and brought the dew, brought the blessing, just so that before we wake up, the ground will be watered. Some of you here today are watching me. You have seeds in the ground. You have prayers in the ground. You have giving in the ground. Come on. You have time that you invested in the ground. You have some seeds in the ground. And, and I, I thank God for you because as the dew is coming, the grace of God is covering that seed. Whatever ground you are at, whatever, wherever God has planted you and your seed is in that ground, I believe that there's a harvest that's coming in the name of Jesus. For all the things that I don't like about spring, as, as far as the weather being bipolar with rapid cycling, there's, spring is also the time of harvest. It's the time of harvest. It's the time when all these seeds that are in the ground are going to come up together. They're coming up together. They're coming up together. Uh, this is the time of the year when I get in the, in the yard and Every time I'm in the yard, I think about Pastor Banks. Pastor Banks taught me everything I know about taking care of, uh, of the lawn. Lawn care, how to make sure that there's no weeds in your, in your lawn and uh, make sure that it's well taken. Pastor Banks took care of it. We were living not too far from each other. And when he, he would drive from, from the church or from wherever he was at coming home, he would always slow down and inspect my yard and uh, and if there was something that wasn't right, he would come back and knock on the door and tell me, hey, I'm in the yard, I'm working. And I would go out there with him sometimes and just learn and uh, just learn from him, just learn from him. I remember when we first moved into that house, that lawn was so terrible, I just wanted to just destroy the whole thing. I said, Pastor Banks, let me bring some chemicals. We're just going to destroy this and we'll start over. Pastor Banks said, no. We can, we can nurse this back to life. This is how you see the heart of the pastor. You know, we can nurse this back to life. And you see, here's what we're going to do. We're going to nurse it back to life, step by step. And before he was done, that yard was was nice. It was it was beautiful. It was beautiful. But it, it, it's amazing to me, the generational disconnect that we had there. I was newer to this experience. And what I wanted to do is, I just wanted to, to, to destroy everything so I could start over. And he was like, no, there's some good in this. There's some good in what you've got. Why don't we not destroy everything? Why don't we keep what you have that's good and improve it? And we started working together. I, I mean, I still have pictures of us being on the field together, working together. And making sure that that lawn was revived. Family, I'm not talk, so much talking about lawn here as much as I'm talking about sometimes when you live in a multi generational world or a multi generational system, it takes multi generations to solve problems. It takes different perspectives to stop to to, to solve problems. And if we're not careful, we come with an attitude of I'm going to change the whole system or uh, I'm going to change the whole content and then we, we're not moving forward. Let me just get into the scripture here and I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you what I mean. I'll tell you what I mean. In Matthew chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9, there's a, there's a scripture here where uh, Jesus is questioned about fasting, but it goes deeper than fasting. Jesus is questioned about fasting. The disciples of John came in and asked him, how is it that we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? What the disciples of John were basically asking Jesus is, you are bringing something new to the table. It's very different from what we used to do. 
What we want to understand is how come you don't do what we used to do? And here comes Jesus. Jesus begins to ask them, and he tells them, um, I'm going to skip to verse 16. No one sews a patch of a shrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do people pour new wine into old wine skins. If they do, the skins will burst. The wine will run out, and the wine skins will be ruined. No, they pour the new wine into new wine skins, and both are preserved. Family, when Pastor Banks came to my, to my, to my lawn, Pastor Banks did not just try to come and tell me, this is what you do. When he came to my lawn, he began to explain to me, this is why you need to do what you need to do. And he began to show me, and he began to train me. What he was doing is, he was renewing my mind and changing my mind and changing my attitude about what I was doing. And after he changed my mind and changed my attitude, which is the wineskin, you see, are you seeing what I'm saying? He changed my mind, and then he was able to, to give me tools and skills, and now it made sense. What Jesus was trying to tell the Pharisees and the disciples of John is, I can tell my disciples what to do, but it's not going to help them much. What I need to do is renew their mind, renew their thinking, help them understand why they are doing what they are doing. And once they understand the purpose behind things, then they are going to start doing what they're supposed to do. Hallelujah. Family, we live sometimes in a generation where people expect you to do things just because they say do it, but they don't always give you the understanding as to why you need to do what you need to do. They don't renew your mind. They don't help you renew your mind so that you know this is what leads to this. That's the reason why I shouldn't do it. And I know sometimes as parents, I'm guilty of that. We don't have time to break it down because it's a dangerous situation. It's urgent. You got to move quickly. But you get more out of life when you take time to break it down and to explain, to renew the mind of the person so that the white skin is renewed. Hallelujah. The white skin is renewed, and then they can flow through what they need to do. Is somebody hearing me here today? Now, let me move into something now that I think is, is very important. It's not just about changing systems, but both the wine and the wine skin have to be new for it to be new. Hallelujah. Both the wine and the wine skin have to be new for it to be new. And when Jesus was talking about the wine and the wine skin, he was, uh, he was allowing his disciples to, to, to think about the type of wine that he brings to the table. It is a supernatural wine, hallelujah. It is a supernatural wine that comes from the word and from the spirit. It is a supernatural wine that's not manufactured by man. It's not doctored by man. It's not what man is. It's when God gives the new harvest, new word, new revelation, new, new, new prayer. That's what you use to release that new wine. Am I helping somebody here today? Hallelujah. But sometimes we are so busy changing systems, changing systems, new wine skins, but not introducing the new wine. You've got to allow the Spirit of God to come in. Hallelujah. And when the Spirit of God comes in, when the Spirit of God comes in, the systems that used to hold, to, 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 to hold the old have to be changed to adapt to the new move of the Spirit. Many churches have missed out. Many organizations have missed out. Hallelujah. Many systems have become obsolete because they didn't move when God said move. I was at church, sitting at church um, on Sunday, and there was a message about vision. And, um, it, uh, and the pastor was showing something on the screen about a bridge that was built many years ago. That built was built many years ago. Engineering was good. The strength of the, build of, of, the, of the bridge was good. The positioning of the bridge, however, was obsolete because the hurricane had come in a few years before and completely changed the position of the, of the water. The bridge was covering the water, but now the water had changed. So the bridge is sitting there Hallelujah. It is still a good bridge. It is still a strong bridge, 
but it's serving no purpose because the water has moved. There's a generation of people, hallelujah, that is coming to this earth that we don't need old bridges built in places that makes no sense. If you're going to build a bridge, make sure there's water under it. Is somebody hearing me? Both the wine and the wineskins have to be new. Both the wine and the wineskins have to be new. Now, Jesus wasn't telling the people that my disciples are not going to fast. My disciples are not going to pray. My disciples are not going to spend time in the Word. He, that's not what he was telling them. What he was saying is, I'm taking the time to change the mind, renew the mind, before I get them to, to begin to do some spiritual activities. Can I, can I go a little bit deeper here? There are some things that never go out of style. Come on. Some things never go out of style. Hallelujah. Some things never go out of style. When Pastor Banks came to my yard, he was okay with me using new technology. He was okay with me using new tools. He was okay with me using all kind of different things. But there's some things that were never going to go out of style. Had it, he didn't want to see no dandelions in that, in that yard. You know, it's like, Pastor Mel, you can use whatever you want to use. But the dandelions or the crabgrass or the patches where there's no grass or the grass that's not green, none of this is supposed to be. Hallelujah. Family, there are some things that you can change, but the anointing must not be replaced cannot be replaced, cannot be duplicated. Uh, the, 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 there are some things that you can change. You can change your delivery. You can change your approach. But the, the love for prayer cannot be changed. You can change, hallelujah, your screens, and you can change the carpet, and you can change the chairs, and you can change how people in position of leadership. But there's something about a, 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 a praying person there is something about, hallelujah, a fasting person. There is something about somebody who knows about the anointing. There is something about the glory of God that you cannot change, that you should not change, yet that you should not touch. Hallelujah. Every time I go home with, uh, and I spend time with my, with my father, we go to the pharmacy, the family business, and we look around, and he always asks me for my ideas and the things that we need to improve and things that we need to change. And, things that we need to uh, to do better, you know. He always asks me for these things, and, uh, and, and, and it is a pharmacy. There's a lot of things we can change, but in order for us to be a pharmacy, there has to be medications there that people can come and purchase, and I have to be able to deal with patients and have nice customer service and patient care and all these things, and, and if, if we want to sell bread, we can remove all the medications and buy bread and sell it. But if we're going to call ourselves a pharmacy, when people come into that place, there need to be medications for them to purchase. Hallelujah. If we're going to call ourselves churches, if we're going to call ourselves houses of worship, when people come in, there needs to be the anointing, there needs to be the Holy Ghost, there needs to be the Word, there needs to be healing, there needs to be deliverance. Hallelujah. Our people need to know that I can come into this place and be healed. I can come into this place and be delivered. I can come into this place, and there's going to be a word that's going to be preached with power and with authority. I can come into this place, and I'm going to I'm going to experience God like I can't experience Him somewhere else. Listen, Hallelujah! I have not I have nothing against I have nothing against uh, a, a, a restaurant that sells fish. I have nothing against a restaurant that, that does seafood. Uh, some of the best restaurants I've been to. Uh, there was seafood restaurant. I remember one in Boston I went to. They had all kind of seafood. I have nothing against it. All I'm saying is don't advertise steak to me. And then I go in there and you're selling fish. Don't, don't, advertise, don't advertise Caribbean food and I go as Italian. Don't advertise Italian and I go as Chinese. Hallelujah. If you're going to call it a house of God, if you're going to call it a Bible study, the Bible better be studied. If you're going to call it a revival, I better... They better be reviving. Hallelujah. If you're going to call it a church, there must be a word on that table. There must be anointing in the air. There must, there must be hands ready to lay on people for them to be healed and delivered. Come on, somebody. There are some things we can change, but some things you cannot change and you must not change. The flow of the anointing must continue unhindered and uninterrupted until Yeshua Messiah comes back 
in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You can change systems, hallelujah, but you can, there, the word has to be there with power, with authority. Amen, amen, and amen, hallelujah. And so, and so we have to be very careful. Jesus said, no one sold a patch or a strong cloth on an old garment. Well, the patch will pull away from the garment. It's, what he's saying is, if, 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 the, if there's something new that's coming, bring the new thing. Bring the new thing. Bring the new thing and be ready to go all the way. But what the people are going to need is the wine. The chemical, listen, the chemical nature of the wine never changed. When you will break it down chemically, it was still, hallelujah, made up of the same chemical elements fundamentally it did not change the difference was it was fresh it was new Hallelujah! it was fresh and it was new let me end with this it's up to god to pull from the old and bring to his people in a fresh way jesus himself said that the one that's able to pull from the both the old and the new is wise it's up to god to do that but it's up to us to go to him to have it released freshly released freshly in the old testament the father said the fire on the altar must never go out every morning when you wake up you must go in there and add more wood make sure that that fire never goes out take the old hallelujah remove it but make sure that that fire never goes that it continuously burn if we lose our fire we lose our identity if we lose our fire we lose our power if we lose our fire hallelujah we lose our anointing we lose our reason for being there must be anointing on our lives i am i am a i am a a, a minister but i work in the medical field i work in the educational field i, I, I work in an academic field the wine skin is different, and the wine is fresh every day. But when I go in, hallelujah, instead of preaching to hundreds and to thousands, it's individual now. The method is different, but that anointing is still the same, hallelujah. Every time a student comes and says, I'm about to give up, I'm, I'm, I'm about to preach to them a word that's going to help them stay there, hang in there and get their degree. When they come in, and I, I still remember till this day, that young lady that came to my office and told me that her sister, um, I think her sister had given birth and the doctors were not sure if the baby was going to leave. And they were driving to a different hospital and there were all kind of chaos. And I told her, close that door. I know you know me as Dr. Betty, but today you're about to know me as Pastor Mel. I will pray for you and for your sister. And by the time, hallelujah, they call again. They will call with good news. And we close that door and we pray. There's something about when people need Jesus. They don't care what religion they are. They don't care whether they believe in anointing or not. They don't care nothing. I need a miracle. And whoever gives me that miracle is the one I believe. We shut that door and we begin to pray. Hallelujah. I didn't have to worry about, uh, do, do I have some oil? I didn't have to worry about, do I have some ushers? I didn't have to worry about none of that because it's a different, it's a different wine skin. It is a different wine skin, but that anointing is there. We begin to pray and we believe God. And by the time we said amen, hallelujah, she came back and said, they called me. My sister is okay. The baby is okay. I remember one of my mentees called me and said, listen, my wife just gave birth last week, but now she's being rushed to the hospital. She's in the ICU. We don't know if she's going to make it. I said, do this for me. I'm not asking you to pray, but do this for me. When is the last time you were happy with her? When is the last time you had a happy moment, joyful moment? He told me, I said, put that image in your mind. Just keep that image in your mind. Think about that image. See her happy. See her healed. See her healthy. Keep that image in your mind and don't think about anything negative. Or don't think about, don't allow any negative thoughts to come into your mind. Keep that image in your mind and let me go to work. I went and started talking to the Lord, started praying. And I released words of faith, words of healing words of deliverance over her hallelujah and then i went to rest because he neither sleeps nor slumber somebody better sleep so i went to i went to sleep 
I woke up the next day. He called me saying, uh, Dr. Mel, hallelujah. She's, she's, she's out of the woods. She's healed. She, she made it. Thank you for praying. See, the wine skin may be different, but that anointing better remain the same. What people are coming, they're coming for what you advertise. If you advertise the anointing, there better be anointing there. I don't want to come to a place that's advertising a message from Jesus and it's a TED Talk. I love TED Talks, but I love TED Talks where TED Talks are supposed to be. Hallelujah. I love scientific meetings and scientific retreats. And every so often, I go to a scientific retreat where we share our scientific information and we move the thing forward. But man, I need when I go to church, I need to have church. I need to hear a word. I need to I need to feel the anointing. When I go when I go to church, I need to be I need to I I I I need it to be church. Hallelujah. And so fam, this is my word for today. I don't know who I'm talking to, but that's the word that I received. The 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 wine skins and the wine, all of them better be new in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that you will touch the people, that you will refresh the people. Come on, somebody. That you will, that you will anoint the people as they go today. May they go with power and authority. May they walk in signs, wonders, and miracles. In the name of Jesus, may their lives be changed. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. I love you, fam. I got to go out there and defrost my vehicles because you know what? As much sun as you see on my face here, uh, it is cold out there. <laughs> but I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.